welcome and thank you so much for joining me on this class uh, with me, Bet Yogi. Um, so today is going to be a cat themed have the flow class. So we're going to get into our movement with our bodies a little bit and embody the spirit cat. So um, we're going to start on our backs lying down. So if everyone just carefully comes down onto your mat and just settle in here for a moment. So surrendering down into the mat, gentle tuck of the chin so we get nice length through the back of the neck. And just connecting to your breath here. Allow the feet to fall out, roughly hip distance apart. And just inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Maybe just taking a quick scan of the body See if there's any areas of tension that you can release, any areas that you can send your exhalations to. And then just relax, knowing that this is time that you've carved out for yourself. Think of a cat sleeping undisturbed with no worries, no concern for what anything else is going on. And then we're going to start doing a little bit of the belly breathing. So this lovely breath, really useful for stress and anxiety. So as you inhale, allowing the belly to fill like a balloon and it can help just to bring the hands to the lower abdomen, exhaling through the nose, letting the belly passively return. Inhaling, filling it up like a balloon and exhaling, releasing. So do three to five more deep rounds at your own time and pace. This is really good for stimulating our parasympathetic nervous system, putting us into that restful mode as we commence our practice this evening. And once you finish your last round, release that breath, return to your natural breathing. And again, just take note of your breathing. Is it fast or slow, shallow or deep? There's no judgment, just observing. And then next we're going to start to tie our breathing to a little bit of movement. So just make sure there's a bit of space behind you. Bring the palms down by your side, facing down. And just keep a gentle tuck of the ribs so that we're still encouraging that natural curvature of the lumbar spine. As we inhale, lifting the arms up and back, only going as far as is comfortable. And then exhaling, slowly bringing the arms back down by the sides. Just trying to coordinate breath with movement. Inhaling, lifting up. Exhaling, coming down. And see if you can make each round slightly slower than the previous one. Really allowing the chest to expand as you inhale reaching through the arms and take one more round or finish the one that you're on and then just come to rest for a moment and let those deep breaths resonate with your body and then bend the knees and bring the soles of the feet to your mat and just heel toe walk them to the outer edges of the mat and allow the knees to fall in so that they're touching each other. We're going to move through some windshield wipers now. So take a nice deep inhalation. And as you exhale, keeping the feet where they are, just allowing the knees to fall down towards the right. And if you can, looking out over the left. And then inhaling, bringing the knees back up and the head straight. And exhaling, taking it down over to the other side. 
just allowing the legs to fall where they naturally want to go. Inhaling back to center and exhaling down to the other side. Taking it back over to the other side now, inhaling up, exhaling down. And we'll do one more round, and this time we'll just hold slightly. So inhale back to the center. As you exhale, allow the legs to windscreen wiper down. And if you just want a little bit more in this hip, you can just bring the bottom leg, the foot to cross over the knee. Just add a little bit of weight to deepen the stretch there. And again, you can look out over the opposite shoulder and just use your breath to ground down and center into your mat. Breathing deeply here. And then inhaling, coming back up to center and exhaling, taking it down to the other side for the final time. And again, using that top leg to just add a little bit of extra weight if you want to deepen the stretch through the side body. And breathing here, really letting the belly fill up with your inhalations. And then inhale back up to center and exhale, just allow the knees to fall back together and just breathe here for a moment. So in this practice, we're really going to try and embody our cat friends, not just in movement, but in attitude. So we are gonna work our core a little bit um, because I mean, the way that cats move is just incredible and the control that they have over their body is insane. So we're gonna be inspired by that a little bit today. So just hug the knees into the chest and have a little rock. And we're gonna roll up and down our spine to bring us up to a seated position. And from there, we're gonna take our tabletop. So you can hold your legs behind your thighs and just start to roll up gently, massaging the spine, maybe two to three times, and then allow your final time to bring you up to seated. And we're gonna turn over and find that tabletop position here with our knees under our hips and our hands under our shoulders. Just being careful not to lock the elbows out, especially for those of us who are a bit more hypermobile. And predictably, we're gonna to move through some nice rounds of cat cows. So for those of you who've never done it before, as we inhale, retracting the shoulder blades together, looking up, allowing the belly to soften down. As you exhale, rounding up into cats, really rounding through the back and broadening across the upper chest. Inhaling, coming back through cow. And again, you can go at your own pace here. Exhaling, finding that cat. Really feeling the back release and broaden. Inhaling through cow. And exhaling through cat. One last round. And try and make your cat really angry this time. So really arch through the back. Imagine a torty that you're trying to take a blood sample from. Really arching. And then exhale. Come back to that nice neutral position. Have a little wiggle out. Make whatever movements your body needs to feel comfortable. And I'm just going to correct my little cat ears here. They might have to go in a moment if they're not behaving themselves. Uh, and we're gonna come through to just warm up the core a little bit. So from this tabletop position, um, we're going to work in a flow. If your knees are a bit sore here, feel free to roll up your mat as a bit of padding, or you can put a cushion under your knees. Don't, don't suffer, just make it comfortable for yourself. So we're gonna move through a core flow, um, and you can go at your own pace here. So first, as we inhale, we're going to reach through the right arm and the left leg. So really extending out through that heel, reaching through the front leg, keeping the neck nice and neutral. And as you exhale, like you're doing the cat pose, bringing knee to elbow, rounding up through the body. So inhaling, reaching out, and exhaling, knee to elbow. And if that's too much, you can put both hands down and just work the leg. So go at your own level. There's no right or wrong here. 
but just really try and connect that movement. So on your inhaling, reach and exhaling, curl. And then do one more and then hold it. And you can either hold it here and breathe, or if you're wanting a little bit more, you can reach this top arm to catch the back foot on the outside, look forward and kick the foot up into tiger pose. So moving into big cat territory now. And with our breath, as we inhale, we're reaching, as we're exhaling, softening tension. And again, holding here is perfectly fine. Just do whatever you can. Take a nice deep inhalation and as you exhale, come back down. And you can just take a moment off the wrist, have a little circle, maybe do some sparkles with the fingers to take the tension away. Because we're gonna come back onto all fours and do the other side. So back into that tabletop position. And this time we're gonna be working left arm, right leg. So as we inhale, reaching out, exhaling knee to elbow, making that angry cat back, inhaling reach, and again, going at your own pace. You can just do the leg, if doing the leg and the arm is a bit too much. See how you go. Do four or five on this side, and then on your last one, remember to hold, so really reaching with your inhalations and softening with your exhalations, and you can keep it here, or if you want a bit more, reaching around to catch the outside of that foot and then turn the chest to face forward. Inhaling, finding length and exhaling, softening into the pose. So as you inhale, really kicking up through the foot, you'll feel a nice stretch through the shoulder here too. And then take a nice deep inhalation and exhale back down. And we're gonna take extended child's pose so bring the toes together and your knees as wide as your mat, sink the heels back over the hips and reach out with the arms. Just bring the forehead to the mat or wherever it goes. And if you're struggling to get the forehead to the mat, you can always put your cushion here or a block and just surrender here. Fill your belly with those deep inhalations. Really soften down. And then from child's pose, we're going to go into our first downward facing dog of the evening. So for those of you who haven't done it before, come back up to your tabletop position, tuck the toes, and remember we're going for a straight spine, not straight legs. So lift the knees up off the floor, the hips go up and back, and you can keep the knees as bent as you need to for your back to be nice and straight. Now, if you're really tight in the shoulders here, walk your hands out a little bit wider. You should find more space in the upper chest. And then from here, you can walk your dog a little bit. So we're not being specious here. We are including a little bit of dog in our cat sequence and then come to a place of stillness. And if the heels come down, pop the heels down and just breathe. And then from here, we're going to embody our mind of cat. And what do we see out the window? Oh, a pigeon. Can you see where I'm going with this? So lift that right leg up and back and bring it forward so that you're bringing your right ankle towards your left wrist and your leg is straight in front of you. Reach your other leg straight behind you and bring your hips down if you can. Again, if you need to put a cushion under here, that's absolutely fine. And you can stay up like this in a nice open pigeon and yes, they are going to go now. Or you can flow with me. So we're gonna walk our hands forward. And as we inhale, look up, open through the chest. And as we exhale, coming down towards the mat, inhaling back up, 
flowing through our pigeon, exhaling down, going at your own pace. Three to four flows. And then on your final one, you can either walk the hands back and stay here. And if you're really tight in your hips or your piriformis, that might be where you need to stay. And that's perfectly okay. You can stay here, or if you have a bit more range, come down onto the forearms, or even come down with the chest and relax the forehead onto the floor. Choose your option, and then try and find a moment of stillness. Sending your exhalations to the outer area of the hip there. This is a really nice posture for anyone who has a bit of trouble with sciatica. It'll help to release the sciatic nerve, which runs under the piriformis here. And you can either stay where you are, or maybe as you breathe, you can go slightly deeper. But wherever you are, stay there. Or if you want a little bit of a deeper option, you can use your hands to carefully walk you back up pick this back leg up, take the same hold that we just had in our tiger pose and come up into a king pigeon variation. But wherever you are is perfectly fine, that's just wherever you need to be. Breathing here, trying to sink the hips down. And just praying that we're a pigeon that gets away from our cat, so bear that in mind. And then take a nice deep inhalation, relax down wherever you are or come back up. And we're gonna move back up together through our downward facing dog by tucking the toes on the back leg and coming back up and have a little pedal of the legs out, release that right hip. And we're gonna take it to the other side. So inhaling, reaching left leg up and back, exhaling, bringing left ankle to right wrist straightening out the right side and this is where if your hips aren't quite reaching the ground you can pop a cushion under here make it a bit more comfortable for yourself and again you can stay here or walk your hands out on fingertips and we'll go through the same flow that we did on the other side yogi's choice so inhaling looking up and exhaling coming down and just with the fluidity of a cat, allow the spine to move. Think about the grace of a cat as it's chasing your pigeon. <laughs> One more. And then find your place for stillness on this side. So it might be up here, or if you can, coming down onto forearms or even relaxing all the way down to the mat. Maybe have a try, different sides have different issues, so you might be more flexible on one side than the other, but find your spot and breathe. Sending those exhalations to your outer hip on this side. Allowing the belly to inflate like a balloon. And then take a deep inhalation. And as you exhale, you can either stay here or stay where you are. Or if you're wanting a little bit more, walk the hands back up. And we're gonna take that king pigeon variation to the other side. So scorpion leg, the back leg, reach round, turn the chest forward, and allow the hips to really sink down. And try not to lock out the elbow, which I'm guilty of doing as well. So if you know that you're hypermobile in certain joints, just take extra care not to hyperextend. Breathing here, and if you can, looking up, allowing the chest to open. And if you want it a bit deeper, really kick the back foot into your hand and pull the foot in with your hand so you get a nice stretch in the hip and also the shoulder. 
and then inhale, release that foot down, walk the hands back out, tuck the toes, and join me back in downward facing dog. And again, you can walk your dog, or you can find stillness and go a bit deeper into your stretch. Just collect your breath. And with the grace and elegance of a cat, we're gonna move through some lovely core twists just to warm it up for what's ahead. So this time, inhale, right leg up and back again. And as you exhale, step that foot forward and relax the back knee down. Find that low lunge position. And just for a moment, come up onto the fingertips, really reach out through the crown of the head and allow the hips to come to the floor. And then you can walk this right foot out towards the outer edge of your mat a little bit. Plant the left hand down so it's underneath your face. And I'll just turn this way so you can see me a little bit better. We're going to rotate towards that bent leg and really reach and extend the arm up. So we're in a nice low lunge reverse twist. And again, using our breath here, so as you inhale, reaching out through the crown, and as you exhale, seeing if that arm can fall a little bit further, maybe the hips can come down a little bit further. Breathing here. Then inhale and exhale, bring that arm back down. Set yourself up to come back through downward facing dog, just long enough so that we can take it to the other side. So left leg up and back. Exhale, step that foot forward, back knee comes down once again. And just spend a couple of moments on your fingertips, finding length with the spine and relaxing that hip down towards the floor. And then walk this front foot out, plant the right hand down underneath and see if you can twist. So maybe you can't put your arm up and that's fine. You can pop your arm on your thigh if you need to. But if you can, look up, reach up, using your inhalations to really reach and find length. And as you exhale, soften down into the pose. And then inhale, reach, exhale, frame the foot with the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Paddle out the legs, take a moment to find your breath, and then inhale, right leg up and back again. Exhale, step it forward, and you can either repeat what we just did, or like me, you can catch the high lunge this time. So coming up into the high lunge, hands can be on your knee for support initially if you need it, and you can really reach through the back of that heel, make that back leg nice and strong for stability. Now you can stay here, or we're going to do the same twist that we did in our low lunge. So the hand comes down, if it can, and we reach up with an inhalation and twist. Reaching, using our breath to soften. And then inhale, exhale, come back down. And if you're in the high lunge, Frame the foot and find plank for a moment. Really reaching through the crown and the back of the heels. And then exhale, back to downward facing dog. And again, this side, you can repeat the low lunge or if you want to challenge yourself, take it up to the high lunge with me. Inhaling, left leg up and back. Exhaling, step the foot through. Set yourself up a moment in the high lunge. Find your balance and you can stay here or right hand comes down, find the twist, inhale, reach up, and exhale, see if you can come down with the hips. And remember, at any time you can take child's pose if you need to. Breathing here. And then inhale, reach. Exhale, frame the foot. Step back to plank. Breathe here, reaching through the heels, drawing belly up to spine, and then exhale, bring the knees down, and come into a kneeling position. 
Now we're going to stick with our big cats for a moment and take a few rounds of what we call lion breath. Now it looks ridiculous, so if you're feeling a bit self-conscious, don't worry, you're not the one doing it live or on recorded video, so just roll with it, have fun with it. So the same way that we um, arrange our legs in child's pose, if you bring the toes to touch and the knees out a little bit, and again, you can put a blanket or a cushion under your knees if you need to. We're going to bring our hands down in front of us, but walk your fingertips so that they're facing you rather than facing the front of your mat. Now, if this is really sore for anybody on the wrists, just come up onto fists. Don't strain your wrists at all, but if you can, walk the hands around. And this is the lion's roaring breath. So we are going to roar and find our inner big cat here. So as we inhale, we're going to reach up and look up. And as we exhale, we're going to stick the tongue out and make a big roar, like <sighs> Inhale, fill the chest, look up, exhale, tongue out, big roar. <sighs> Three more, just like that. You can go at your own time and pace. And remember, there's no one watching, no need to feel silly. Inhale, reaching through the neck, giving the front of the neck a nice stretch. Exhaling. <sighs> Tongue coming out, roaring. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Not sure it sounds as much of a roar as just like a cat in distress, but either way, it fits in our theme. So last one. Inhale, big inhale, and exhale. <sighs> Lovely. Relax the hands, bring them back onto your knees, and come on in. Well done, everyone. I know that's something a little bit different. So from here, we're going to get into the core a little bit more and embrace our inner cat with attitude. You can get your claws at the ready if you want. We're going to play a game that I've sort of just invented called Back Boat Ball. So what that involves, you might want to just watch me first, is I'm going to call one of those words, either back, boat or ball, and I can call them in any order. Now, my inspiration for this game came from cats. You know like when they're lying like this and they're just inviting you to rub their belly and then you do and you know it's coming and suddenly they're up like this. So this is gonna be back in our reverse handstand. So ideally you have your head and arms off and maybe even your um, legs slightly lifted off the ground. If you can't do that, just do what you can. When I call boat, we're gonna come up into our boat pose. So our legs are at 45 degrees, shins parallel to the mat, feet are tucked back, back nice and straight, and our arms are reaching forward. If you're really wanting to go for it, you can straighten the legs and find full boat pose, but half boat is perfectly fine. And if I call ball, we're gonna screw ourselves up so your toes are just touching the mat, and you're really drawing the knees into the chest, trying to find a nice straight back. So if everybody's got that, we'll go through one round first, just to make sure everyone's okay, and then I'll start to call it. So start on our backs, so we go back, boat, ball, back, boat, ball, one more time, back, boat, ball, everyone got it now? Okay, so ball, boat, boat, back, ball, boat, ball, boat, back, back, boat, Ball, ball, boat, back, boat, ball. One more, back, boat, ball, and hug the knees into the chest and have a little rock. Well done, guys. Don't worry if you're not quite keeping up. Just go at your own pace. You can even work through the movements. We're going to play that one more time, if you're with me. So, and if I sound a bit out of breath here, it's because I am. This is not easy, so be kind to yourself. We're gonna try it one more time. So let's all start in back. So back, 
boat, boat, ball, ball, back, boat, ball, boat, ball, boat, back, back, boat, ball, boat, ball, last round, back, boat, ball, and hug the knees, put the feet down, and have a little rock. You're all doing really well there, guys. So just breathe. You can even relax the forehead down onto the knees and just allow your body to feel those effects. And that's a really nice way to just work the core by involving the whole body. But it really does remind me of when cats invite you to rub their bellies and then come at you when they're through tomorrow. So that's where that inspiration came from. We're going to start to wind things down slightly now, much to everyone's uh, happiness, I'm sure. So come back down, use the arms to lower yourself onto your back. We're going to take a posture which is actually more of a yin posture called banana asana. And the name pretty much comes from the banana shape but it's also funny when you see cats lying on their back making this stretch to the side as well so cross the right ankle over your left and walk your feet towards the left edges of your mat and then reach your arms up and back and also hold your right wrist with your left hand and inch those arms over to the upper left corner of your mat and you should hopefully now be in a nice sideways banana shape. Make sure both of your shoulders are relaxed onto the floor. And if you're feeling stretch here, great. If not, just walk your feet and your wrists a bit further out. Relax the chin and the jaw and just breathe here. And as you're breathing and inhaling, really trying to fill that right lung, feeling a deep stretch through the side body. And we're actually just going to relax here for quite a few breaths. This is a really nice stretch to do before bed. Great for releasing tension. with your exhalations try and soften and surrender down into your yoga mat breathing into any areas of your body that you feel needs it And then take a nice deep inhalation. And as you exhale, just allow the arms and the feet to come back to a central position. Bring the palms down by the side just for a few moments, just so you can feel the difference between your right and left side. It's perfectly normal to feel a bit lopsided when one side's had a really nice stretch out. See how that feels in your body. See if you notice a difference in your breath, in your chest. Maybe you don't and that's fine, but maybe your left lung feels a little bit tighter than the right side. Just observe. And then get ready to take it over to the other side. So this time, left ankle on top of right ankle or whichever side you didn't do before. Walk those feet over to your lower right corner of your mat, reach the arm up and back. Take the left wrist with the right arm and start to move your wrists towards the top corner of your mat, making your banana shape. And you can adjust this to suit you. So if you want to make it a bit more intense, walk your feet and wrists off the mat a little bit more. Relax both shoulders down into the mat. Also just keep the chin slightly tucked so we're not 
cranking through our necks. Breathing here. Deep inhales, filling up that left lung and exhaling down into the mat. And again, if it helps you to picture a cat in this pose, we've all seen them make waves with their bodies. I swear that cats are only part matter and actually fluid, the rest of them. They're like the cornflower of the animal world. Breathing here. I know you should be feeling a really nice stretch through that side of the body. If you want to take it a bit deeper, take it a bit deeper. Otherwise, a couple of rounds of breath here. And then deep inhalation. And as you exhale, just allow the limbs to come back to center. Relax the arms down by the side again. And just check in, see how that feels now that you've balanced both sides. We're going to take one final posture before we have our short Shavasana before meditation, and that's happy baby. So if you already know how to do happy baby, feel free to go up and we might rename it happy kitty for this class. But for those of you who don't, bring the soles of the feet to the floor and then keeping your sacrum, reaching towards the ground, lift the feet up, bring the arms inside of the knees and catch the feet with the outside of your hands. So elbows are inside the legs, hands on the outer edge of the feet. Sacrum is pointing down and away from the pelvis. Chin is slightly tucked. And as we pull down so our shoulders are on the floor, kick up through the heels, and you should feel a really nice stretch in the inner groin. And you can play with it a little bit, maybe have a little rock. You can even extend one leg out and then the other, whatever you feel like doing. Feeling this deep stretch in the hips. A couple of deep inhalations and exhalations here. And then when you're ready, relax the arms, hug the knees into the chest. You can maybe make some circles with the knees, going one way and then the other. And then when you're ready, extending both legs out in front of you, about hip distance apart. Arms are out at roughly 45 degrees with the palms facing up. Chin is slightly tucked. And we completely surrender into our mats for a brief Shavasana, which is a really important part of the class. It just allows our bodies to process everything that we've just done for them. Really important mental break to breathe here. And if the mind starts to wander, that's okay. Just gently bring it back and refocus your attention on your breath. And just know 
that whatever you did during this class was exactly what your body needed. No need to judge. Just be proud of yourself for carving out this time for your own physical, mental and emotional well-being. Just start to deepen your breath a little bit. Bring some gentle movement into your body, maybe wiggling your fingers and toes. You can either take a nice big cat-like stretch or hug your knees into your chest, whatever you need. And then keeping the eyes closed down, just gently turn onto your right hand side. So you're in a sort of fetal position, using your arm for a pillow. And just savor this moment. Take nice deep breaths here. And then when you're ready, use your arms to bring you back up into a nice seat. Okay, just take a moment. We're gonna move into our meditation. So hopefully everyone's feeling a little bit more zen. So we've had cat pose, we've done lion's breath, we've done tiger pose, we've done back boat ball, moving as a cat would if you were rubbing their belly. Um, and now we're going to take it into our meditation section. So if you want to put anything warm on or get your bolster or cushion, it can feel really nice to be sat on something so that your knees are below your hips. Especially if you're new to meditation, it'll be a lot more comfortable for you. So just take a couple of moments to prepare. And you can either sit cross-legged like I am, or you can be on your knees um, in Vajrasana or um, Japanese style if you're not familiar with that term. Or if this is really too much, um, just pop and get a chair and you can meditate in a chair instead. When you're ready, whatever position you've chosen, just find length out through the crown of the head Give the shoulders a few shrugs, relax them down and away from the ears, ground down through the lower body, and just try and focus to release tension from your lower back, because that's what can make meditation uncomfortable. So just send some breaths to that lower back region. Remember that we can be upright without being tense. So just relax into the posture. And when you're ready, gently close the eyes down. Once again, just connecting to your breathing. And if you like, you can return to those belly breaths that we did at the start of class, allowing the belly to inhale and fill like a balloon and return as we exhale through the nose. And just keep breathing like that for the moment. And as we enter this meditation, we're also going to continue with our cat theme and be inspired by them. So I was thinking to myself, what is it that I actually really love about cats? And what is it that sets them apart um, as a species and as characters? And one of my favorite things about cats is how good they are at setting their own boundaries. So we all know from working in practice or maybe from our pets that if a cat doesn't want you to do something, you're not gonna do it or you're gonna find it very difficult to do it. Um, so once it's made its mind up, that's it. And you really have to have a cat on board with treats or mineral handling. So we're going to focus our meditation today on our own barriers and boundaries. Um, because I think in this time when we're all on lockdown, we're maybe struggling, um, we're all wanting to say yes all the time, or maybe we're saying yes too much. Um, and we need to make sure that we're taking some time to give back to ourselves as well as those people around us. So keeping the eyes closed, continue that connection you have with your breath, but maybe release the belly breath if you were using that to settle into it. 
And I'd just like you to imagine that you have like a force field around you, just around where you're sitting right now. Now imagine this field, tune into it, and just ask yourself, maybe what color is my field? And how high does my field come up? There's no right or wrong answer. So just check in. It doesn't matter what color it is or if it's not got a color. I mean, for some reason mine is yellow and it goes all the way around me and it's coming up to about shoulder height for me at the moment. Wherever your field is, maybe it's all the way up here above your head, or maybe it's down here by your ankles, wherever it is, just bring that to mind and turn your attention onto your force field. And when you've got it pictured clearly in your mind, we're going to use our breath to help us to move our field. So you can either do this still, or if you're someone who likes to move a bit with meditation, you can use your hands gently to reflect the height of your field with your breath if you need to. So what we're all going to do is as we inhale, we're going to imagine that we're drawing that field right up over our head and that it's connecting above the crown of our head. As we exhale, we're really drawing that force field down into the ground and making it disappear. So inhaling, your force field is coming up overhead, you're completely safe and enclosed. Exhaling, force field comes down into the ground, leaving you open to everything. Inhaling and exhaling, moving your field with your mind, moving with the breath, going at your own time and pace. And if you're experiencing some resistance to this in whichever direction, that's okay. Just breathe through it, do your best. Maybe check in later as to which part felt uncomfortable for you, if you are. Otherwise, everyone continue raising that shield and allowing it to lower with our exhalations. Okay, now that we've hopefully got a bit of control over our shield, what I'd like you to do, and this will be different for each person, so there's no right answer, is if you're someone who likes to have their shield really high in day-to-day -day life, um, I'd like you to work now to practice maybe bringing it up just halfway with your breath. And if you're someone who is constantly open to everything around you and you feel like you have no barriers and no shield and your shield is down here somewhere, I'd like you to practice raising your shield up maybe to that halfway point. So what we're trying to do, whether we're too open or too closed, we're trying to find a nice halfway point so that we're still protecting our barrier, but we're also open to everything that's around us. So choose your focus point and once again, connect your breath. And if you like to move the hands with the breath, continue to do that. Otherwise find stillness. Really focus your awareness and your energy on finding that balance point for you and your barrier. And 
And then when you've done that, relax the barrier image, return to your natural breath. And you can even have a little shake out if you need to <laughs> dispel that energy that you've just created. And we're just going to give our barriers a little test now. Um, so the other thing with cats is that they are extremely reactive, um, which is obviously hugely beneficial for them. Um, but also sometimes they're a little overreactive to things. Um, and we can be like that as people too. I speak personally here that sometimes I need to breathe before I react. So we're going to picture a situation. And again, it'll be different for everybody. Picture a situation maybe at work or at home, especially on lockdown at the moment where we're all living in each other's pockets. Maybe just picture a scenario where it triggers you. You want to react either with anger or frustration. And we're going to imagine that we can actually, before we react outwardly, we can use our barrier, raise it up to prevent that getting outside of us. So whatever that moment is, whether it's having conflict with someone in the house, maybe it's a difficult client on the phone, we're going to use our breath. So instead of reacting straight away, it's also worth noting when you're imagining this scenario where your barrier comes to. Because for me, if I think difficult client, boom, suddenly it's up here. And we just need to practice lowering that down so that we're not affected as emotionally as we might be. So notice where your barrier is when you're thinking of this situation, or maybe you're the opposite. Maybe, you know, your barriers are so low when you're in a stressful situation and you feel like you can't protect yourself at all. Wherever it is, imagine that, and then come back to that scenario where you're feeling a little bit emotionally overwhelmed. And we're just going to, again, use our breath to find our barrier. So if it's up here, Exhaling, lowering the barrier. If it's down here, inhaling, bringing it up. Finding that nice, happy medium, nice halfway point. And just take care if this scenario that you're imagining is bringing up anything for you. Just breathe, you're perfectly safe. Using the breath. Three deep rounds of breath, moving your barrier. And just start to see by using your breath in this way, any tightness or tension you were feeling just disperses even a little. Last deep inhalation. And this time as we exhale, we're all going to drop our barriers. <sighs> Sigh up through the mouth. You can gently open the eyes. Well done, guys. I know that's not always the easiest thing to do. But next time you feel yourself reacting or feeling like your barriers are too high or too low, imagine that special cat in your life, whether it's a pet or a patient, and how they would maybe uh, put up boundaries um, of a sufficient level um to protect themselves while still being open to things so if you'd like to imagine your favorite cat right now as we close our practice i know picturing one of my favorites always brings a smile to my face you can then bring the palms together at heart center take a nice deep inhalation through the nose and sigh it out through the mouth Namaste guys, thank you so much for practicing me. I hope you have a lovely evening and I really want to see your cats. So hop on over to Vet Yogi on Facebook and show me pictures of your cats. Good night.